Hey guys, welcome back to All and Unlaw. This is quick internal medicine, and today I'm gonna talk about the EKG. EKG, and today's topic of discussion is sinus tachycardia. Sinus tachycardia. What's a sinus tachycardia? To understand sinus tachycardia. The one thing you should know that how to calculate the heart rate on EKG is really very important. We uploaded a video on that. Please do watch that video. And after that, you have to know what's a normal cardiac sinus. What's a cardiac sinus, right? That's very, really very important. So you know very well that if the heart rate is below 60, we call it as what you call bradycardia, okay? And if it's more than 100, we call it as tachycardia. Right, ready and attacky. Right, guys. So, to call to know sinus tachycardia, first we should know what's a cardiac sinus. What's a normal cardiac sinus? So remember, there is a criteria for that, and if it fulfills this criteria, then you can call it as a cardiac sinus or a normal cardiac sinus or normal cardiac rhythm. The heart rate, the heart rate should be between sixty to hundred. As we know, if it's below 60, we call it as a Brady, and if it's above 100, we call it as a tachycardia, right? The heart rate should be 60 to 100 to call it as a normal cardiac sinus. But this is not the only one requirement. We have the other requirement. The P wave should be upright, should be upright in lead 2, in lead 2, okay? And the P wave sh should be inverted inverted in a b r lead a b r okay and the p a wave is followed by what you call qrs complex if it fulfills all these four criteria then you can say then the rhythm of the patient is what you call uh, what you call sinus of this patient is normal cardiac sinus it is a normal rhythm right guys so now let's talk about the sinus tachycardia in a previous video we discussed about the sinus tachycardia in this video we're going to discuss about the sinus tachycardia you know very well this is a p q r s and t p q r s and t right so to call it as a sinus tachycardia the heart rate should be the heart rate should be more than 100 remember it should be greater than 100 beats per minute and since it's a sinus tachycardia sinus means it should fulfill the criteria of sin normal sinus rhythm thus p wave should be upright in lead to okay and should be inverted in AVR lead AVR okay guys and every P wave should be followed by QRS complex QRS followed by QRS complex so P wave here QRS complex is here P wave here QRS complex here but the problem what we face in a sinus tachycardia is rarely if the heart rate in sinus tachycardia is more than 100 beats per minute except in what you call uh, fit athletes okay uh, this sinus tachycardia can rarely go what you call excess one beats per minute except in athletes okay fit athletes right um with this heart rate if the heart rate is very high it's very difficult to differentiate the p wave from the t waves this is a positive wave this is the positive wave and the, it makes us very difficult whether it's a p wave or a t wave okay um and this can this confusion can lead us to the what you call uh, for, to the diagnosis of atrioventricular nodal reentry tachycardia av nodal reentry tachycardia okay so now let's talk about the causes for a sinus tachycardia you know very well the physiological causes are many for the sinus tachycardia and very important like we have anxiety anxiety fear fear pain right guys exercise so these are the causes for what you call sinus tachycardia but if the patient has a sinus tachycardia you should not forget to think of the other causes like we have the 
patient might be taking the drugs okay the drugs right guys like adrenaline atropine solbutamol okay so very important okay and uh, what you call it if the patient is taking caffeine alcohol then it can cause and if the patient has what you call ischemic heart disease myocardial infarction heart failure okay heart failure then pulmonary embolism okay and if there's anemia anemia okay hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism or fluid loss these things can be what you call be cause for a sudden tachycardia then you have to find out and you have to find out the cause for that okay guys so remember the one thing one point i would like to tell you if there is a persistent sinus tachycardia uh, persistent sinus tachycardia should lead to suspicion that the diagnosis may be incorrect both atrial flutter and atrial uh, what you call tachycardia can on occasional uh, on causal inspection okay may be mistaken for sinus tachycardia so you should think of two possibilities atrial flutter or atrial tachycardia could be there right guys so this is regarding the brief video on uh, sinus tachycardia thank you so much for watching this video take care